All right, if you've ever wondered what an indexed annuity is, how it works, and why it's so freaking popular, then this is the video for you. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about a few things. We're gonna talk about the indexed annuity and its mechanics, how it works. We're gonna talk about how it compares against the S&P 500, and we're gonna go from the year 2000, and we're gonna to come to the present day and time, and we're gonna see how it actually worked. Then we're gonna compare it against all of the most popular retirement plans that exist. So these are the IRAs, the 401ks, 457s, 403bs, etc. And one of the major problems that comes with all of those plans that I just listed, and we're gonna talk about how this indexed annuity competes against that and how it solves for that problem. And of course, we're gonna review a few calculators that you will get access to for free at the end of all this. The link is gonna be in the description below. And then you can use those calculators in your own life and for your own financial planning, for your own portfolio, and you can see how it actually applies in real life with real numbers. My name is Armand Vakili, your value plug. And if you're gonna get any value out of this video today, or if you've ever gotten any value out of anything on our channel before, please go ahead and make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that notification bell so that you get notified the next time that we drop something. All right, so first things first, what is an indexed annuity? And its simplest forms, an indexed annuity is a retirement contract that you can purchase through a life insurance company. So it's a life insurance retirement plan, and it can be purchased with cash out of your bank account or with a rollover from a qualified retirement account. Indexed annuities have two phases in general. You have the accumulation phase, and then you have the distribution phase. In the accumulation phase, as it implies, the money is accumulating, it's growing. And in indexed annuity specifically, there are some really neat features that happen while you're accumulating your wealth. The first feature is the 0% contractual guarantee. So what this essentially means is that no matter how bad the market conditions are, and in this particular market, so at the time of this video, we are at the tail end of the 2022 year, so it's December 2022. For this year, the Fed has raised the rates seven times, and it's going to be raised again in the next couple of months as well. So we're in a very bad and a very heavy bear market. Not a single one of my clients has lost any money because contractually, all of their money is protected by the 0% guarantee, which means if the performance of the account ever goes below 0% or goes negative, loses money, then you'll just stop at zero. So let's say you have a million dollars in the account, you started with a million dollars and you earned $100,000 worth of interest and now you're at 1.1 and the market crashes and it goes below zero and it goes negative, you're still at 1.1. You will never go below that 1.1 threshold because it stops you. There's a floor of 0% that you'll never go below. Now, as the market recovers and as we go back into a progressive economy, a bull market, then we can expect that you're going to get some kind of a rate of return. And so in an indexed annuity, your rate of return is capped by the cap of the account. We call this either the participation rate or they just call it simply the cap rate, which ends up being anywhere from, let's say, 10 to 14 percent, 8 to 12 percent. Depends on where you go, which insurance company you actually leverage to open one of these plans for yourself. But the idea is you get capped and the insurance company is using your money to make money. Right. So this is where it comes uh, handy to understand that this account is not too good to be true because the insurance company is using your money to make money. And so, yes, they do give you that zero percent floor. Yes, they do give you that guarantee that you'll never, ever lose money, but they're using your money to make money. And this is what makes it profitable for them as well as you, the account holder. One of the calculators that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison between the S&P 500 and the indexed annuity with its 0% floor and the cap. I think we did a 10% cap rate. And so you'll see exactly what the side-by-side -side dollar comparison is gonna be like, and you'll get access to that calculator as well if you wanted to use it with your own balances, so on and so forth. But it's just a really great way to see how it actually applies, how this floor and cap rate apply, and it will review a graph version of it as well so you can see what it looks like visually which brings us to the distribution phase of the annuity and in the distribution phase you can access your money in a few different ways you can make a direct withdrawal from it you can do something called annuitization which is you get scheduled payments from your annuity but really the most powerful way that you can take money from your annuity is through one of its greatest features ever 
which is the lifetime income rider or the income for life rider. And it's literally just like it sounds. It's a rider or a feature that once you turn it on, the insurance company starts making you fixed interest payments for the rest of your life. And no matter what happens with the market, no matter if they pay you more money than was originally in the account, doesn't matter. Those income payments will never stop because it's a fixed interest payment. And this is the key feature or maybe one of the main features that comes with indexed annuities. Now, this particular feature is extremely powerful in the case of required minimum distributions. And just in case you don't know what that is, required minimum distributions or the RMD law is a law that's applied to 401ks, traditional IRAs, 457s, 403bs. These are all qualified government uh, retirement accounts, right? And so these accounts have a very specific rule attached to them, which says you have until the age of 72 to start making distributions or withdrawals from your retirement account. Now, if you don't do that, so if you wait until 72 and a day, the IRS will take 50% of your account value in taxes. Now, the reason why they do this is because in a 401k or a traditional IRA, you're getting a few tax advantages as you create this plan for yourself. So the money that goes into a traditional IRA or the money that goes into a 401k is exempt from your year end income taxes, meaning you made hundred grand, you put $10,000 in your IRA, that $10,000 is not taxable as income because it's pre-tax dollars, it went into a tax deferred plan. Now, while that money is growing inside that plan, it's also growing tax deferred, meaning you're not paying any taxes on the growth of that account as well. So you didn't pay taxes on the way in, you didn't pay taxes as it grows. Uncle Sam and the IRS aren't going to let you get away with not ever paying any taxes. So what they're going to make you do is you either start your withdrawals at the age of 72, or they're just gonna take half the account value in taxes, right? That's the rule. That's the RMD law. So now here's how the indexed annuities income rider fixes that problem, solves for that problem. RMDs are direct withdrawals from the balance of the account. So it's if you have a million dollars in there and your RMD is three and a half percent or whatever the percentage is, you take $35,000 out of your balance and now you're left with $965,000, I think. And so $965,000 is the remaining balance. The next year you gotta take another RMD and the percentage or the amount that you're supposed to take out grows every single year because they just want you to keep taking out more and more chunks of money. So the next year you take another $35,000, $40,000 and now you're left with 900 and some change. And so it eats away from the balance. That's what an RMD is. Now the income rider is a fixed interest payment that satisfies that minimum requirement. So by the time that you get to the age 72, most insurance companies will give you a six to 7% lifetime income, right? And so if it's 6%, that's $60,000 on that million. So we're just gonna talk about the million. So on that million, 6% income would be $60,000 to you. Now that income, that $60,000 payment that you just got is still considered income in the eyes of the IRS. So they still want income tax on that. They still want you to pay taxes on that. But the big difference is it's not eating away from the balance of the account. So the million dollars remains. You get paid your 60,000 a year every single year for however many years, it could be paying to you way more than a million dollars, which in more in most cases, it does pay more than whatever the original balance was in that. And so you'll get a lifetime income that is equivalent of more than a million dollars. But what's beautiful about it is that a million dollars stays. And because it's a life insurance retirement plan, it becomes a life insurance benefit. Now, here's what that means. Here's why that's so important. If you had a 401k that had a million dollars in it, okay? and you pass away, that million dollars is gonna be subject to two very, very big hazards. One of them is called estate taxes. Estate taxes equate to 40 to 50% of the account value. So just like that, 40% of it or 50% of that million dollars is gone. Then you're left with 500,000 to $600,000. That 500 to 600,000 is now going to be stuck in probate which is essentially the government saying, hey, you know what? We know what to do with this money. We're gonna determine the best use of this money and we're gonna pay you know, the back taxes you may owe or any debts you may owe, whatever, whatever, whatever. And whenever we think we're done paying all of your obligations, we'll send the remainder of the money to your beneficiaries, to your estate. Now, there are some really famous examples 
of people who didn't have a trust in place, who didn't have an annuity in place, that all of their money got stuck in probate. Martin Luther King is one of them. I think Paul Walker was one of them. There are a lot of people, famous people, wealthy, affluent people that didn't have their estate properly set up. And when they passed away, the majority of their assets was stuck in probate. So this is what happens when you roll over that million dollar 401k into an annuity. It immediately becomes a life insurance contract, which means whenever you do pass away, that million or whatever that balance is goes to your beneficiaries directly, immediately. The life insurance company writes a check. It goes directly to your beneficiaries tax-free, so no estate taxes and no probate. Now, this is why annuities are a big part of estate planning. And if you talk to anybody who's in the top 5% of the country, the top 1% of the country, they are very familiar with annuities. They have multiple annuities. Their annuities belong in a trust. They have annuities for their kids because it's one of the founding principles, founding products that has made the wealthy who they are. And so what we're doing right now is we're trying to explain to you what it actually is, how it works. And now I'm going to show you what the numbers are like and how they compare against each other. And hopefully it'll blow your mind because when I found out about this first, it blew my mind and hopefully it'll actually add some value in your life. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, our first calculator is going to be the S&P 500 versus the indexed annuities calculator. And this is addressing the accumulation phase of an indexed annuity. So we're comparing what it would look like in two different scenarios. So if somebody started, and we'll change the balance here to 1 million, and if somebody started with a million dollars, and you can just change this number according to whatever your specific situation would be, this is why you're gonna get access to this calculator. So we start with a million, and uh, we just wanna see what the accumulation looks like and what availability in this account would look like and how these two just compare against each other. And so in 1998 to uh, 1999, this was around the dot-com boom, and so you had a 26% return, 19% return, and the market, we'll just refer to variable accounts as the market, the market would grow to 1.5 million for you. And if you had an indexed annuity, that was reflected against the market, it would just be capped out at 10%. And so you would be at 1.2 million. These first couple of years, the market beats the annuity. And then we had the year 2000, 2001, 2002. And these were the years that uh, there was number one Y2K that happened in 2000. This was uh, more of a cultural correction that happened because a lot of people thought the computers were gonna crash and there was gonna be like this whole big correction. And then there was the 2001 9-11 uh, Twin Towers planes being crashed into them and the beginning of the U.S.-Iraq war. And so we had the correction from 2000 to 2002. And in that situation, the market would be at 906,000 because it suffers pretty tremendous losses. But the index annuities stopped at 0%. And in this situation, we would still be at 1.2 million. And when the recovery begins in 2003, and this is where we had the mortgage bubble building up, stated income loans, and so on and so forth. 26% was the first year. The next two years were below 10%. So the annuity gets the same return. And then you have a good year and then another one. And so got capped out at 10% for these two years. And we got whatever the market got in the remaining years. And 2007, the annuity is still beating the market. And in 2008, when the mortgage bubble burst, we had the 930,000 drop, so, or excuse me, it was $580,000 that was the loss, and it leaves us with 930 in our variable account in the market. And in our annuity, we didn't suffer any losses because we stopped at 0%. So we are still at our 1.7 million. And instead of picking up from 930, this person would just pick up from the 1.7 million. And so we have another bull run, and this bull run, this most recent bull run, up until 2000 and what, I think it's 2018 was like a decent enough correction that we can call it that. But from 2009 to 2018, which is a 10 year period, it's a very strong bull run. You had the annuity capped out at 10% pretty much the whole time. And the market did extremely well. And so this is where it started catching up with the annuity, but still it's at 2.7 million versus 3 million in the indexed annuity. And then we have a small correction in 2008. And then we had a really inflated, very strong bull run 
from 2019 to 2021. And this was to a few different reasons that we won't get into right now. But the market, the account variable account is at 4.9, where the index annuity was at 4 million. And this was the end of 2021. And so this is where I had a lot of people telling me, yo, the crypto market is killing it. Why would I do an index annuity? Why would I do something that caps me out at 10%? And I mean, based on what I've been taught and based on what I've experienced, I've been in the game since 2004. I've seen a few of these corrections. And so I am aware of what happens when the correction takes place. And of course, there was a very, very strong correction this year. And currently, the S&P 500 is down 20%. If you look at some of the major companies, they're down average 25, 30, 40%. And when we look at all of these numbers, you have essentially the same balances, right? So the annuity is still at 4 million because it didn't suffer any losses. The variable account in the market suffered an $850,000 loss, but they both are around $4 million. Now, here's the catch. The person that's in the market right now cannot cash out. They can, but it wouldn't be a good idea because you're cashing out on a bear run. It's not a good idea to sell when things are in the red. You want to buy when things are in the red. So when you're stuck in a bear run and you need access to your money because number one, prices are going up, cost of living is going up, and everything is on sale. So investments are on sale. You can buy real estate on sale. You can buy stocks and uh, cryptocurrency or precious metals or whatever your investment of choice would be. You can buy all of those things on sale. So you need access to your money. However, it's not a good move to sell if you're inside a variable account. When you're inside an account that bottoms out at 0%, you can literally at any point cash out anything that you want. And there are even options in these uh, plans that take you that allow you to take a loan against it so you don't pay any kind of income tax on that. And you use that loan and you go ahead and purchase yourself an income investment. And these are the situations where people create their wealth. And the reason why the 1%, the we're talking about the top 10% of the top 10%. It's you're, when you look at those people, they move differently. The reason why they focus on insurance is that in down markets, in the markets where they need the cash to buy the income investment, like the property or anything else that would be a really great deal right now, you need that liquidity because that's when everything's available on sale. So it doesn't make sense to be inside a variable account especially when you're going into the distribution phase. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So this is the accumulation phase that we looked at. And this is what essentially what it will look like if you had the two accounts in a 22 year period. But the difference is that in this down market or in the last down market, the crash in 2008, can you imagine what happened where everything again is on sale. There's so many people that made so much money at this time or the crash that happened in 2000, 2001. There are so many people that made a tremendous amount of money in this time, but it was because they were either cash heavy on hand or they had an indexed account and an indexed annuity that gave them that leverage moment, that ability to take cash against uh, whatever their balance is or whatever their product is and then use that cash to buy these investments. So the next thing that we're going to talk about, the next calculator that we're going to look at is going to be about the distribution phase of when you want to take money from your annuity and when you want to activate some of the benefits that it has on that side. Okay, so now we have our RMD versus the income rider calculator. So we spoke about the required minimum distribution law that happens to a lot of qualified accounts, which is the 401ks, the IRAs, 457s, 403bs, etc. In those accounts, by the age of 72, you have to start taking money out of that account. And so what we're going to look at is what would a million dollars look like once that person hits the age of 100? So this is, I believe, 28 years. We're going to look at what the next 28 years of RMDs will look like on this account. And then we're going to look at what the next 28 years of income payments, fixed income payments would look like, and then what the balance will end up at at the end. So here we go. We got the 72 year old person. They just started their RMDs. And this is also one of those calculators that you can adjust. So if you know someone or if you have someone who has 
uh, a balance like this, or excuse me, an account like this, then you can use this for yourself and figure out what your RMDs will look like in the next 20 something years and how you should plan accordingly. So each year, the and this isn't calculated based on percentages, by the way, I just built this calculator uh, calculating the percentage for us so that we can figure it out. But the way that they do it is that the number of years that are left for you to hit a certain age. And based on that, you should be taking out a certain portion of what's left in this account. And what you'll see is that the dollar amount is actually pretty close to each other. So if we were to start at 3.65%, which would be the first year, and you would take out your 36,000, the next year, the percentage itself goes up, but the balance was lower. So that 3.77 of the 963 would end up being again around 36,000. And then as the percentage goes up, the the balance upon which that's applied, right, that balance lowers. So the money that's being withdrawn is still around 36,000. So if you have a million dollars, essentially, what they want you to do is take out about $36,000 a year, until you've taken out the full million dollars, right, to just take out all of the money. And so in that situation, you would have what 115,000 at the age of 100. And the percentage that year would have been 15% approximately. And you would have paid $18,000 for that year because 15% of whatever is left. And so towards the end, you see the the, um, excuse me, the yearly amount that you're taking out is lowering, but it's because the balance is pretty much depleted. It's almost at the end of its life cycle. So at the very, very end of it, after 28 years, you would have withdrawn $900,000 and you would be left with 97. So 902,000, you'd be left with 98,000, right? And so this is what it would look like if you were just taking RMDs against your retirement account. Now, what it would look like if you rolled over that million dollars. So at the age of 72, 73, wherever you are, if you roll over that million into an indexed annuity, it would be a qualified rollover. So you're not paying any taxes on the transfer and you're not paying any fees on the transfer. And what it would look like on your balance is drastically different. And again, this may sound too good to be true once you see it, but this is all guaranteed in a contract. And these are companies that have been around literally centuries and decades. And once you understand the the mathematics behind it, it makes complete sense. So you have a million dollars and the average income annuity would give you five and a half percent. So there are companies that give you higher. There are some companies that give you lower. We have a very wide array of companies that offer this income annuity or an indexed annuity. And you can get six percent, seven percent. If you wait longer to activate it, the percentage itself would go up. But once you activate it, you're locked in on that percentage. So if you started at the age of 72, let's say you got a 5.5% income for life, that's what you would get for the remainder of your life. And the balance is a million dollars. And so it's a fixed income payment. It's a fixed interest payment. So a million dollars, dollar amount would be 55,000. That satisfies the requirement that the IRS had. And then the balance after that is still a million dollars because we never withdrew from the actual balance, right? We're just living on the interest. And so the interest payments are just applied and we just keep going. And by the time that we get to our age 100, we've withdrawn from the overall balance $1.595 million. And the ending balance is still a million dollars because again, these were income payments. Now here's what's really interesting about this, right? Person is 100, 100 years old. Okay, cool. They got their their income and they've been able to supplement their retirement. That's great. This million dollars is now going to be left over for the estate. On this side, there's 97,000 left over for the estate. So just if we're comparing what's left over for the estate, we can say on this side, this is obviously better. But here's another really amazing protection that comes with this. And again, we talked about this. So you have $97,000 left over, but because it wasn't planned properly, it's not in the appropriate retirement vehicle, this 97,000 is now subject to estate taxes, and it's subject to probate. So estate taxes takes away another 40 to 50% of this. So we'd be left over with 45 grand. 
And that 45 grand is now subject to probate, which means the government can hold on to it. And whenever they feel it's appropriate, they'll release it to whoever your beneficiaries were. Where on this side, this is a life insurance product. It's a life insurance retirement plan. That million dollars immediately is turned into a check and it's sent to your beneficiaries. There is no estate taxes deducted from it and there is no probate at all in sight, not even remotely close, because this is a life insurance retirement plan. And so not only does it take care of you during your golden years and pay you more than what the RMD essentially would be, and towards the end when the RMD starts to lower, and this is around the time that people actually need the money even more because medical bills and all of those things come into play, the RMD itself would be lower. Of course, you could make more withdrawals than whatever the RMD would be, but you would be eating away from your balance faster. Where on this side, it's not just a fixed payment. It's a higher payment than what was on the other side, and it sustains itself and maintains all the way through the very, very, very end. May you live past the age of 100. It would still go with you past that, and this is where you would end up at. And so this is what it looks like when you have an income annuity, an income rider attached to an indexed annuity, and what it would do for your balance through the retirement, through your distribution phase, and what it would do at the very end for your estate. So this is a very, very cool product. Obviously, I'm a big fan of it. Obviously, I'm biased because we distribute it and I own it, so on and so forth. But if you took whatever thing that you may have heard of it that may have in any way been counterproductive and you just put that aside and you just look at the numbers just compare the numbers and if you want to compare these things in real life meaning go ahead and find a company for you and will uh, uh, make them give you an offer so that they offer you their best deal for whatever your specific goals are and then we make each company do their best offer for you, make them essentially compete against each other. And then on that side, you would see what it looks like in real life and what they would offer you contractually in real life in exchange for what you got right now. And so that may be good for you. It may not be good for you. But if you're curious to figure out if that's actually the deal, then hit us up. And of course, we're going to close the video out outside of this presentation and you'll you'll see what goes on with that. But Really, this is why I'm such a big fan of these things. And now you see what it looks like on the distribution side and you saw what it looked like on the accumulation side. So let's uh, leave the presentation and we'll close out the video. Okay, so how awesome was that? Hopefully now you can see why the index annuity is so powerful and how it actually plays out in real life situations like the stock market or like the required minimum distribution situation. So if you want to get access to your cal to those calculators for yourself and if you want to use them in your own life or maybe with your family or employees or things like that, the link to that is below so you can just register for it and get access to all the calculators. If you or someone that you know is being forced by the IRS to take their required minimum distributions and you don't want the balance in the account to die out, then please go ahead again Follow the link below and then you'll find a way to talk to me or to one of our licensed advisors. And finally, if you or someone you know is potentially interested in going into the financial services industry or you want to change a career path, you want to make more money, you want an, a, a chance to create true wealth in one of the greatest industries in the world, then we're looking for people just like you. Our firm is expanding heavily across the United States. We're already in 49 states, including Puerto Rico, but we're a very, very ambitious firm and we definitely want to get the largest saturation in the United States market. We want to be number one in the US, so we're kind of competitive. I hope you're competitive too. And then we're going to expand obviously to Canada, to Mexico, and of course any other country that has a tax code and deals with insurance products the way that we do. So if you're open to opportunity, I definitely want to talk to you. If you're interested in figuring out how an index annuity can apply to your own financial planning, I would love to talk to you. And if you know somebody who's being forced by the IRS to take their RMDs, or if that's you, where they're forcing you to make withdrawals from your account, then we would love to talk to you as well. We have a lot of great carriers, insurance providers that offer some really amazing indexed annuities. And I know I'm very confident that we can give you something or find something for you that'll fit 
all of the goals that you have and everything that you want to do with your finances. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you got value out of this video. And yeah, I mean, I already gave you the rest of the closing pitches. So make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment below if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit that notification bell so that you get notified the next time that we drop something. My name is Armand Vakili, your value plug, and I'll see you in the next one.